We left off the third part of this lecture with this satellite image of ocean temperature in the North Atlantic that shows the Gulf Stream current running up the side of North America, breaking away from the current. And then it starts to meander. And if you look closely, you can see that it, those meanders break off into these eddies. And if you look even closer again, you'll notice that some of these eddies have warm cores. So they have warm water indicated by the warmer colors and some have cold cores. So this is a cold core eddy. It has colder water at its center. This one has colder water at its center. This one has warmer water at its center. So that's sort of interesting. And as you've seen on the perpetual ocean video, these eddies are a very, a very major feature of the circulation patterns within the surface ocean. So how do they form? The little animations on the left show how the Gulf Stream, once it breaks away from the continent here, starts to meander, so it starts to meander. And then eventually those meanders break off and we end up with these isolated eddies that remain spinning in, they retain the, the rotational direction of the meander from which they break off. So you can see this one's spinning in a clockwise direction and this one's spinning in an anti-clockwise direction. And in this case, you can see this anti-clockwise spinning one has a cold core and the clockwise one has a warm core. So can we explain that phenomenon? Well, yes, we can using the Ekman transport phenomenon that we've already learned about during this lecture. So as we know, the Coriolis effect in the Northern Hemisphere deflects water to the right. So if we have an eddy spinning in a clockwise direction, the water tends to be deflected to the right by the Coriolis force. And that piles up water towards the center of these spinning eddies. So we get convergence in this case, where the Coriolis effect creates convergent flow towards the center or the central axis of rotation of the eddy. And then if we have an anti-clockwise spinning eddy, the Coriolis effect in the Northern Hemisphere pushes the water out to the right, away from the axis of the spin. And in that case, we have divergent flow away from the axis and we have upwelling. So depending on the spin direction of the eddy, we either have downwelling in the core or upwelling in the core. So here's an example on the East Australian coast. So this doesn't show the full East Australian current, but this is the southern end of the current coming down the coast. Here's Sydney for reference. So the current comes down, then it peels away from the coast, and then we get the current breaks up into eddies, which then rotate and spin their way slowly down the coast. And because we're in the Southern Hemisphere now, with this particular eddy, the water deflection by the Coriolis effect is going to be to the left. So as the eddy spins, the water is being deflected towards the central axis of the rotation of the eddy. And so in this case, we have convergent flow and we end up with downwelling in the center of the, of the eddy. And in this case, we end up with a warm core eddy and you can see that quite clearly Here's the temperatures on the left here. So this is a warm core eddy and it's surrounded by cool water. The interesting thing about that is because we have downwelling, on the right here we have a satellite image depicting the chlorophyll content or the phytoplankton content in the eddy. And you can see that these warm core eddies are really deficient. They have very low phytoplankton contents and that's essentially because the nutrients have all been consumed over a period of time by phytoplankton uh, within those water masses. You can see it's slightly different here. This eddy is rotating in the opposite direction. It's not as strong. It has a slightly cooler core 
And you can see there's a lot more phytoplankton growth in that particular eddy. And as you will remember, where we have convergent flow, we tend to pile water. We're, we're piling up water. We create a hill or a positive surface feature on the ocean. And where we have divergent flow, we end up with negative features. So on this map of sea surface height south of Tasmania, you can see the red indicates a positive sea surface anomaly. So this here is an area that's up to 30 centimetres higher than the normal sea level. And over here we have another area with a bullseye that's about 30 centimetres lower than normal. And the question here is, can you tell which way the water is rotating around these features, producing these bullseye anomalies on, in terms of surface ocean height? And that's one of the questions you'll be answering in tutorial this week. So that brings us to the end of the lectures for this week. And I'll leave it to you to go through the learning outcomes for the week. Okay.